live. Hello. 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 Hey. <laughs> so uh, welcome everybody to uh, the second, is it second or third day already now? Of the, uh, season, season. Day three, no? Day three, yeah. Uh, of our solar punk adventure. Now it's more turning into lunar punk. Um, we see the sun is rising and the moon is coming. So welcome moon. Uh, I am here joined <laughs> by my extraterrestrial friend, Dr. Paul, Pod Moses, uh, who is here to talk a little bit about extraterrestrials and the work that they're doing uh, here in Berlin and in Metropolis, as you call it. Yeah. Uh, here from <laughs> Metropolis. Yes. Um, this was a very quick setup. Uh, this, this doing virtual streams is, is not our favorite format. But we really wanted to try to do something um, dramatic, uh, emotional, perhaps. Uh, I'm going to improv with this discussion, but uh, somehow for me, this the streaming medium is is not capable of transmitting what what probably needs to be communicated. But we'll give it our best, and we did very quickly. Normally, we would do either a format called Citizen Kino which is uh, an interactive cinema, a kind of hacking of cinema. Or uh, you, as you see on this backdrop, uh, we are also, during Corona times, we started a live radio stream going back to our pirate radio roots. And this website might be useful because we will put notes up on a chaos pad, notepad there, uh, which I will reference some things that I might not be able to get into too much depth. So. Uh, if you want to look at links of things related to what I talk about, uh, go to check out that site and go find the chaos pad. So, and and just to say, I'm I'm really happy that you all could set up for for our thing so quickly, and thank you to the tech and Julio so much. And uh, I so wanted to dialogue with uh, the cyborg girls, and I hope we will get a chance to do that. But maybe some of the things I say will be a little bit. You know, something to think about these two two presentations together. I think uh, there's a lot that that we will, um, yeah, there will be a dialogue somehow. I think even mm -hmm. if it wasn't going in real time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, so to 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 create the the dramatic opening atmosphere, I wanted to start with this trailer of uh, a Czech sci-fi movie from 1963. And uh, if you could go with that, Julio. Yes, for a second. Uh-huh. Coming right up. Yeah, I think it's going. Good. Uplinou léta a děti se budou učit, že jsme byli první kteří se vydali do vesmíru hledat život na planetách Alpha Centauri. se ve vesmíru už nemůže nic nového objevit. Může. Může. Pozor, třetí paluba. Pozor, ležící člověk. Pozor, neodpovídající člověk. Mrvý člověk. Mrvý člověk. Mrvý člověk.
uh, I think that mic is back on. And um, so here we are. Um, I'm Dr. Podmosis from the Excel Terrestrials. And the talk that we want to uh, present is solar punk for versus the hyper industrial hamster cage complex. Hamster cage complex. Hamster cage complex. As you might have noticed with all of these virtual environments since the corona lockdowns, uh, we are deep, being deeper and deeper immersed in the hamster cage complex. Mm -hmm. And um, this is something really, really like something that needs to be discussed. I hope that there are other sessions at the, uh, the Congress, uh, RC3, dealing with the complexity and the, the uh, very dark situations that we have. I mean, here I am in this um, bizarre kind of anonymizing uh, um, mask, but also because of uh, somehow we are locked into this pandemic narrative. And uh, this is something that we would like to analyze. Julio, yes, is putting on his, his device. And um, all of this is kind of, uh, to me at least, and to to the Excel terrestrials and the work that we are doing, we've been analyzing the, the technological environments for, for quite some time. Um, they have not been going very well. We are creating uh, more and more techno dystopian uh, situations around us. And I, as I was trying to think about how to describe the dire situations that we are facing, I mean, I, we can be funny about it, but but this is not a game. I mean, we are in deep shit. Our society, our planet, uh, uh, human beings, other, uh, uh, all of species on, on planet Earth are in, in deep shit. And uh, we're not so techno-optimist that, you know, there's some techno-fix to be had in this situation. What we need to do is uh, reclaim our terrestrial. We're being. not so techno optimist because we're that techno you know, and techno fix. So to, um, in this to explain this story, I thought I'd start is, with a uh, with reclaim a our terrestrial being. That the first um, uh, CC, uh, Chaos Congress that we participated in in uh, was the twenty two C three, which is uh, I believe almost is it fifteen years ago. Yeah. Um, and we went with a lot of a lot of cynicism. We were not really excited about the hacker culture because we felt that having seen what was happening on the lost lost coast of California, yeah. where some of the XL terrestrials were operating prior to that, aka San Francisco, aka San Francisco, yes, the uh, the birthplace of the Silicon Valley beast, and um, and that is very much a military industrial complex uh, seed, which also needs to be constantly um, brought into the analysis if we're talking about where we are going from here with, with technologies, with tools, uh, in this digital, uh, the internet environments, all of that. So, um, so this anecdote from 22C3, one of the things that re remains very, very fresh in my mind uh, still, uh, was someone coming to present and talk about uh, Second Life, uh, which was a, a creative uh, enterprise uh, in, in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. And this guy, Corey Andreska, I believe, I, I don't know his last name pronunciation-wise uh, and don't have it in front of me, but uh, Corey Andreska, maybe? Uh, I'll put that in the link because I think it's really interesting to look at even just from a, a quick surface look uh, at his Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. uh, he was working for Linden Labs, but he had already been working for things like the uh, uh, Naval Academy, U.S. Naval Academy, military, um, and uh, I believe uh, possibly the CIA and NSA, I forget which mm -hmm. exactly. Um, and, and here he was now a big player, one of the co-founders of Second Life. And, um, and then I'm like, and, I, and, I, and I, I kind of butted heads with him, you know, it was one of these, these moments in encountering as a kind of XL terrestrial journalist 
looking at, okay, what is going on at these Chaos Communications Congresses? It's Ooh. been around for 22 years, you yeah. know? And here they are featuring uh, Silicon Valley types in the midst of their hacker, hacker world, which is, you know, a fascinating thing to do. Um, and he was very enthusiastic about the Second Life thing, which for us as uh, arts and activist organisms was we, you know, we were already making lots of jokes about the Second Life and what that could bring. And the irony of this is that now we are, here we are 15 years later, and we are having to participate in a Congress where we need to be thinking of deep, you know, deep thinking about solutions, organizing our communities. And this is kind of turning into a second life version of, um, of, of Chaos Congress because we can't meet in person because of this pandemic. Yeah. And you can't necessarily directly blame that on, on the uh, technological environments. But then, yes, maybe you can. Our technological world has been burning up the planet in a way, uh, our technologically dominated society. And we are, we were going, we've been going in the wrong direction with technological tools for, for quite some time. And, you know, take the whole fossil fuels industry, this hyper-industrialization of life forms. Uh, and, and, you know, I was kind of curious. I had to look and find out what is Corey doing today, 15 years later, you know? And it seems like he kind of cashed in on his networking value. And he went on, actually, I don't, he's not presently there, but he was like chief officer or president of the uh, engineering for Facebook. You know, another kind of, uh, you could call that a kind of second life yeah. uh, game okay, right. evolved in another way, more, more with even more vulture claws and, and vampire teeth to get at your data, to make money off of your data, to make, you know, to profit off of our communications, which are super necessary if we want to organize our society to, um, uh, yeah, do the right thing things to to build commons to build community uh to build a a a good life for all um but we know we're not going in that direction with the technology because the corporates really dominate you know what you know, what can we say like 90 percent of uh digital culture stuff maybe worse than that even of course there's all kinds of uh web stuff uh, dark web they say there's so much that we don't we don't you know easily encountered. But uh, we're, we're, as I say, you know, the situation is very, very bad, Ooh. you know. And I often, over these years, I go, I keep coming back to, to CCC, hoping, and there's always fantastic presentations, I have to admit, but there's also a large percentage of it that are just not really clued into the terrestrial dilemmas. And it took it took the Hacker Congress CCC maybe other, maybe even they were the first to do this. They did a conference uh, two years ago now I think or called Bits and Boima, which finally after like thirty some years of doing Hacker Congresses suddenly realized this is a really important topic what we are doing to the environment. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to begin with that anecdote because I feel like we need to have a really a critical approach with uh, how to proceed, you know? And this, this uh, Czech sci-fi film mm -hmm. is, not a, is not a happy film, you know? It's Stanis based on Stanislav Lem. And um, Stanislav Lem was writing in the midst of the, the Cold War. And a uh, brilliant thinker. I'm not, a, I'm not a Stanislav Lem expert. But the, the, I feel he was on the right track to really warn us about things that are going on. So take a look at that uh, IKEA BX1 film. I'm still studying that myself. It's very new to me. But then I realized, hey, wow, this was 1963. It had an influence wow. on 2001. Stanley Kubrick kind of even, you know, took the took that to make his version of a of this this film uh, in a way. Uh, before uh, all, you know, all the Ridley Scott sci-fi, um, even before Solaris, wow. so um, kind of maybe gave uh, uh, um, Tarkovsky his, you know, hey, I got to make one of these uh, 
too, and Solaris is a fantastic story as well. Uh, so where to go with that? I, I, I back up a little bit and just say, so the XL Terrestrials have been um, working a lot last years on another platform, this interactive hacking of cinema. If we could bring up maybe some of the, we make posters for each show. Maybe that'll give you a taste of some of the things. This is already a few years ago. I thought this was, I just grabbed some at random. We're now up to episode 80, 88 or nine, I think. Um, that one before was almost like a pre-scient, um, you know, this guy wearing this mask. And I forget which film that's from. Unfortunately, I'm not, I don't have these notes in front of me. But what we do with uh, Citizen Kino is to take this over-mediated world that we're in and uh, try to hack it. So it's not so much just about what we screen on the films on a, on a, uh, in a movie theater setting. We're there to take it apart, you know, do some deconstruction, do some situationist kind of uh, picking it apart, culture jamming, and we show clips. And then we, we engage the audience, and sometimes that, that takes some theatrical forms. We're still working on the, that aspect, but we feel like we need to really put on something very dramatic uh, and emotional so that people get in the right zone to think about how to respond to our, our crises at the moment. Mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned to me once that um, the idea of Citizen Kino is to digest media collectively. Yes. So analyze it collectively okay. as opposed to, because oftentimes we all see these films, we all like, get all this media, and we all understand many things, but we don't really talk about it to another person because we're so alienated yeah. in our devices. So yeah. it, feels, it feels like, a, I mean, I've been to a lot of them, so it's a really nice space to come together and look at things together and then make a discussion. Yeah. Right? And plus, uh, part of that, even now more important than when we started almost 15 years ago with Citizen Kino episodes, is that uh, media is becoming even more cubicalized. Well, we're being more like, oh, I watch this in my individual box zone, in my, my, my personal screen, my personal device. Mm -hmm. You know, part of the, you know, the hamster cage complex has even taken the power of what cinema can do mm -hmm. and put it into this very, very, you know, and that's highly problematic. So mm -hmm. we, we definitely find the need to make a live event out of presenting these films mm. and so that you can you can feed back you can you can ask questions about the clips that we show you uh sometimes we even you know challenge the audience in weird ways and go out into you know, force them to participate in some ways there mm. there are during these shows there are guinea pigs the way the way possibly you know like facebook is using you as a guinea pig and uh, these social media platforms are using us as guinea pigs. We do it. We do it in a much softer nature. You know, the, the guinea pigdom, the world of guinea pigdom that we are in in these technological environments. We like to come over to you and say, "Hey, the, I, I know that film was very harsh. You know, <laughs> but let's have a conversation. Let's about talk it. about it." Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, we try to be warm and cuddly, even if we are like trying to smash. The, uh, capitalism, the capitalism, and the corporate capitalist players, and hopefully also yeah. the nation state. And the, na the nation state is another factor. We have dealt with some some shows related to that in many ways. Yes. So Julio is a fantastic participant in Citizen Kino, and we have the honor to have his, his uh, presence. And maybe if, yeah. Oh, this is a very recent one, and we did this one actually at the Rotor Salon mm -hmm. uh, in Foxbrunna, where we thought actually. Solar Punk was going to be based in the Roger Salon. Um, and this is for Transmediala, and we were discussing the 20th anniversary of Indie Media Network, where what is Indie, Media? Indie Media is a platform that grew out of the anti-globalization struggles, these, these um, like WTO meetings mm -hmm. and G8 meetings and G20 meetings. In Seattle. And Seattle. And Seattle is when Indie Media was, uh -huh. there were ideas already bubbling. And then Seattle was the first time the website actually functioned where gave you, the citizen, or whatever, you know, consider your, whatever, your, your non-citizen anarchist, um, 
and every, give everyone the possibility to, to report on the news and tell what's happening in the streets because we knew, we, always, we know the corporate media lies to us all the time. So let's tell our own version of what happens in the streets or let's tell our own version of what's happening with uh, the crises of the pandemic and the way it's affecting our communities and not listen to what the corporate agenda has to say about like, uh, you know, go, go, go pay for your tests. Uh, what I won't get into, I don't want to get into pandemic even details. Launch, yeah, you will launch the Gold South uh, or like, yeah. I mean, also but celebrate know. Pfizer for having uh, <laughs> uh, produced a very expensive vaccine, yeah. you know, these same kinds of things. This is not the way me and you uh, or, you know, my peers or our mm -hmm. other extraterrestrials are going to discuss what's going on with this. But uh, so that was that show. I uh, won't go into too much detail on that. Maybe it's another slide will bring up uh, some topics there. It's just to give you a flavor of we always come up with these images for posters. Yes, we've done a lot about the military industrial complex. And uh, and now we're shifting gears a little bit to talk less about the military industrial complex, but uh, the, well, then there was a phase where it was called the military entertainment complex. <laughs> and uh, now I think we are in the hamster cage complex. The hamster cage complex. Yeah. And, and we, we really need to address that. And I hope there's people here at, at the CCC and all over the, this, uh, this beautiful, sometimes green, sometimes blue planet uh, that's getting turned into a gray goo muck uh, mm -hmm. desert. We're going to turn it into a desert if we don't figure out how to uh, stop this hyper-industrialized uh, way of living. And so uh, I saw that Cory Doctorow gave a talk about, hey, the techno-optimists were wrong. I'm going to have to catch up on that because uh, Cory, for us, has been a, quite a technotopian. And we, we never really bought into the, 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 the optimistic, uh, or let's say the, I mean, of course, we all need to work with these tools. But it's pulling us in a, like a gra like gravity, yeah. this techno-dominant culture yeah. into the abyss. Yeah. You know? yeah. We were just mentioning behind the screen that it felt like as if the skeleton, the technology of our bodies is wants to leave our bodies and just leave us without without the framework, right? It just wants yeah. to take over somehow. Pretend that it can live forever and, you know, transcend the... Uh... Like this Ray Kurzweil thing, who became like one of the chief uh, pioneer, I don't know what his position is, Google. Mm -hmm. You know, when he when this loony, loony ideas guy who thought, oh, we can download our, our brains into the machine, mm -hmm. uh, suddenly like has this power of being the uh, part of the most powerful company. It's like, Hey, we really need to know what these people's vision for their future are. This is not happening democratically. Maybe, maybe I don't agree that I don't. I don't feel like it's a good idea to download myself into the machine. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel myself as a, uh, as an extraterrestrial first, as an anarchist in there somewhere, and as as an organism. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, we are organisms that might not be compatible. So easily compatible with this, uh, the idea of the cyborg. I think we need to question that a little bit more. I'm not. I personally am not. I'm not a Haraway uh, enthusiast. I feel like there's something that she pushes. That yes, this hybrid is 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 what we where we need to go. Mm -hmm. And I would say we need to pull back and really deal with like if we can't deal with uh, poverty in the world and people who just don't even have the bare necessities to function as an organism. We can't keep pushing this hyper-industrialization on top of it. It's just making some people super rich and they have everything and yes, they can use these amazing tools, but it's also like devastating mm -hmm. for the people at the, at the low levels. So, you mm -hmm. know, until, until this power of the technology could be equally distributed, you know, it's like sort of a Gibsonian thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're, we're not going anywhere near that direction. Mm -hmm. We're going in a hideous, hideous uh, path towards the Bezoses, the Elon Musks, and the Bill Gates of the world deciding for us what technology should look like, mm -hmm. what, what tools we're going to use. Yeah. I mean, this, as, as many beautiful things as we can do, we can stream and do, you know, do this. this. This computer interface is a 
is a business like a it looks like something that should be in an office building <laughs> you know this is not a beautiful like a violin it's not a piano it's not a, a something you would want to caress mm. it's a it's a, a fucking office tool yeah and this, we get this version of the technology yeah. because these motherfuckers in Silicon Valley, which came, their money came from the military industrial complex. Yeah. You have to look at the history of cybernetics to yeah. realize where all this venture capital was coming from to, to create the environments we had now have. Yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, I don't, I don't really feel even, I'm not even that inspired to like say, let's, ins let's reclaim these fucking office tools. Mm. I'm more like, let's reclaim our terrestrial being. And if mm -hmm. we don't reclaim our terrestrial being, we're just going to be in wars, fighting over the, the basic necessities that everyone needs to live, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a really tricky dilemma. We can't just come here and be, you know, enthusiastic about what we can do with these tools. There's something else that needs to be grappled with. And, and I don't have, I don't have, you know, this is not a really well-prepared talk. I don't have answers for this. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying this needs to be, you know, this needs to be thrown into the CCC uh, debates yeah. more, more vociferously. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it's not, it's not really there enough. Yeah. I mean, there are amazing talks, and some people who kind of are aligned with our extraterrestrials critique, but, but not, you know, not enough on the on the main stages, not enough uh, as the focus of of the debates, perhaps, and uh, and certainly not. The stuff is not in our power at the moment. Yeah. We're so far away from being at the steering wheel of something. Mm. Uh, the corporates and all of their fucking plundered money are driving this thing off some kind of weird cliff. And, and we need to have strategy for that. Like an emergency. This is an emergency. Every year I go to CCC, it feels like a fucking emergency. Mm. And, and I, I, don't, I don't really see the, you know, we need to be pulling the, the fire alarm. Mm -hmm. You know, the planet's fucking on fire. Yeah. And um, there's people drowning in the Mediterranean. I know there's some amazing talks related. I'm so happy that CCC is aware enough, you know. Mm -hmm. CCC is probably the best conference, possible conference we could be going to mm -hmm. to talk about these things. And yet still we even have to push CCC further. Yeah. But, I mean, think about what shitty conferences are going on in, in the Bay Area, San right. Francisco Bay Area. Do they have anything like CCC? No, no, no. The hackers would be like, <laughs> like trying to scrounge together, you know, stuff in a hack lab, and you know, maybe forty people come to see something at that uh, noise bridge mm -hmm. hack lab. I mean, fantastic. We need hack labs everywhere, but you know, in terms of like getting at the steering wheel of where society is going with these technologies, there's a lot of work to be done, uh, mm -hmm. and, it, and urgent. Yeah. As urgent as you can you can imagine. Um, I I don't know what time we're at here, but um, we have uh, like twenty more minutes. Twenty more minutes. Okay. Um, I would say no, actually fifteen more minutes. Uh, we have a couple of clips also. Yeah, I, I it's really hard to do the the citizen keynote thing in this environment. Yeah. But, uh, I I will put some clip links mm -hmm. because I would like to. I will just mention Bernard Stiegler, mm -hmm. who passed away, sadly, um, in August mm -hmm. uh, from previous medical conditions, as I understood, uh, that he was facing some, some not good things. And uh, his work, he, has, he kind of is combining a, a, an analysis of the cybernetic world mm -hmm. with the Anthropocene. Mm -hmm. And we also, with extraterrestrials, have been dealing with the Anthropocene and... and that's like, you know, to put it in a nutshell, if you're not that familiar with the Anthropocene theories, it's like we are creating a human-made environment on planet Earth, turning it into what we as humans see for what our realities are, what, what we need for our needs, and, at the, you know, at, and at the same time sort of destroying the ecosystems uh, for all other species. And uh, this also gets really, really emotional. If you think about like what crises we're in, we are probably in the most, uh, uh, in, a, in a, we're in a techno-fascist moment, yeah. you know? Big we, extinction in, in life, basically, yeah. in the history of life. Yeah, yeah, but uh, this, moment, this crossroads has never probably, well, it's happened with uh, maybe Ice Age or something, you 
know. But this is a this is a, a man made, and I will say man made in this case because it's it's a it's patriarchal a, uh, uh, ugliness. That system has of a, domination. System of domination, techno colonialism, as I say. And if we don't resolve this and take you know take sort of the the some kind of recourse or retreat or um, something to heal ourselves and the planet. Mm -hmm. This techno fascism could be like the worst thing we will we we could ever we can't even imagine how how mm, vicious this thing could turn you know could turn. Mm -hmm. And so we need we need some plans. Um, I won't have those for you this evening. I, I have to apologize. Uh, not so many plans, but. Okay, just to finish off with Bernard Stiegler, mm -hmm. uh, take a look. Uh, it's this dense French theory, but but he is talking about uh, also just to grab something from this lecture that he did, uh, or sorry, an interview with Zero Books. Um, he mentions this uh, weaponization of financial financialized technology and 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 financial systems. Mm -hmm. It's weaponized. Mm -hmm. So in the same way that we say, you know, Amazon has weaponized the internet to really just like a vacuum cleaner suck all of the wealth out of all of our labor in the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is the way that it's been weaponized and it's been functioning like a very well built machine. But it's not, you know, it's not what we would want for machines, as mm -hmm. you know, to try to point out. So we have to we have to have to uh, confront this yeah. this uh, doomsday kind of machine things that are totally predatory. Which, to come back to why I'm anonymized uh, this evening, is that we we should not be at CCC right now um, thinking that well we can all be transparent. Mm -hmm. You know, not when we are in this predatory environment. If I I'm only giving you half of what I'd like to say. And I'm, I'm anonymous already, you know, some semi-anonymous. If, if, if we gathered here in a room and I was discussing all of these topics, you know, I, I could go deeper into, like, you know, the things that we are threatened by and how we need to respond. But I can't, I can't do that on a, on a Zoom stream or a, a something that's going to be archived. And, you know, this is, this is unrealistic. So I don't understand that we're, we're obeying this Zoom culture. You know, I, I, no, no offense to anyone. I understand the the practicalities, and not everyone has tech skills, myself included. I, you know, my uh, Excel terrestrials really don't like to spend a lot of time figuring out the tech shit, and uh, we always love when we have uh, good technicians to work with, uh, and we appreciate those ninja skills. But um, yeah, for me, it's just it's almost like a instant nausea feeling of trying to navigate these environments. But why are we obeying this, you know? This, okay, it's pandemic lockdown, We're, we have to be safe, we have to be careful, but this uh, hamster cage thing is, is accelerating. Mm -hmm. We are being cubicalized, captured, and this is, this is gonna have implications because we need to be working against these corporate agendas, but the more we get pushed into, into the hamster cages, you you won't even be able to move your your little paw to grab a glass of water or whatever you you know to just to, to, to smack that CEO in the face. You won't have any room to get a, any swing motion, you know, to give punch this this motherfucker who just uh, you know became the trillionaires trillionaire trillionaire whatever. So you know, be careful about how deep you go down the hamster cage hole. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Leo, just, I, 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 I want to warn you. Yeah. I want to warn you people out there. These hamster cages are not for humans. They're not for hamsters even. Let your hamster go run wild in the parks. You know, don't try to keep a hamster as a pet. Mm -hmm. I think it's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. Unless you live on a farm, which leads me to my next subject yeah. about reclaiming space, mm -hmm. land. There was a little bit of a land thing mm -hmm. discussion I heard earlier or something. Mm -hmm. And this is crucial. And, I, and this is why we need more voices from the global south, mm -hmm. you know, because they know what it is to be with their feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, we are we are like in the north, global north, we are becoming uh, 
we're becoming ghosts, like electronic ghosts. Well, you know, we're not living on the planet. So uh, we need more voices from the global south. We're really happy to hear from cyborg girls because their 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 attitude towards technology is so caring and about the body. We, you know, we we need to deal with this this body. Mm -hmm. And and so great. That's that's that's. This is these are the kind of communities we need, do need to strategize with. Mm. So um, let's have that dialogue more. What I wanted to yeah. So land. Here we are in Metropolis. It's you know like the Metropolis movie. This is uh, there's not a happy ending here in this uh, urban urban uh, hyper industrialized. Uh, plundering of our being you know we are we are being used for for all kinds of things that, that is just a dump it does not feel good you know and uh, let's get out into into nature more uh, of course we can't abandon the cities they are an incredible resource but we need some rotation strategies with with land projects we need to understand if if, if you're a city kid like like some other ex extraterrestrials I know very well, you know they grew up in cities. The cities they don't know anything else, mm -hmm. and we need to educate and like have like you know let, let's 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 have a farm just outside in Brandenburg and uh, you know let's be autonomous by making our own our own food and not have to spend money on on a cap in a capitalist way to sustain ourselves you know? mm -hmm. and. Uh, one of the resources I wanted to use in this talk, and I won't have time to go very deep into it, and I also need to reread it myself, but Dennis Shep is a, is a nice uh, anarchist character who has written for Roar magazine an article fresh, fresh as of a few days ago, and uh, ooh, I don't have the title of the article in front of me, um, but Roar magazine, Dennis Shep, um, and it's about it's about projects that we can create land based that exist outside of the capitalist zones that we don't want to be living in these abusive uh, vampiric parasitical systems we can find our ways to exist outside of them in these small nodes or these autonomous uh, safe harbors as if you could call them uh, pirates used to call them. Mm. safe harbors and uh, he has a project called the foundry which is in northern Spain Galicia uh, there's others I'm sure many of the hackers know about uh, Calafu um, and we need more of these we need them everywhere we need them out just outside of our our metropolis uh, unsustainable metropolis city so we can rethink a new uh, Zad Zad in France was a fantastic laboratory for like how can we do this without any of you you know no shopping malls, no supermarkets. We're just gonna go out, create our community in an anarchist zone, and defend that zone to you know it's still alive. Mm -hmm. Zad even though they yeah. got kicked really hard for trying to be mm -hmm. experimental and independent and anarchist, uh, mm -hmm. they are still thriving, and we need more of these. We need them everywhere. We there there was a talk of. Um, Trying to do Zod uh, somewhere here uh, when when Zod was being attacked, attacked so heavily a couple summers ago. Um, so I don't know. Maybe you'll find some ideas in Dennis Shep's article. We hope to have him on Global East Radio get yeah. to interview possibly even tomorrow night. Hey, that's a good question because somebody just asked, uh, how can we find out about next upcoming uh, Citizen Kino situations? Yeah, um, Citizen Kino is a bit dead. At the moment, mm -hmm. it's it's in uh, um, hibernation during this Corona mess. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't do public events so easily, so it's on hiatus at the moment. Mm -hmm. But to find out, uh, unfortunately, we have to rebuild a website uh, from from possibly from scratch. But we hope to have an XL Terrestrials website okay. again soon, or a Citizen Kino website. In the in the meantime. Our most actual running project is the Global East uh, Radio the Global Industry. Strategy, yeah. So if you put up that uh, that initial slide as our backdrop, or um, that has our website, which is a super simple, you know, setup, really, really quick, just to uh, just to get things going. Uh, last March, as uh, Corona lockdown first round was happening. <laughs> 
And if you go to that website, and again, this is really simple stuff, but uh, there's a chaos pad, notepad. Mm -hmm. And there we make announcements of like when the next uh, GRK shows yeah. are going to happen. Yeah. We will try to, we, we are we are scheduled to do one tomorrow, uh, day four of Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, don't know if that stream in any way is going to link into the actual RC3 infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We have our own stream page and it's, it's just radio. We like to avoid uh, visuals. As we can see. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, sometimes. And, uh, and when the situation seems to call for it. Um, and, and so uh, we, have, we have guests, we, we, we analyze different topics. Sometimes it's just music. Mm -hmm. to kind of, to, we need our own, to relax our own brains and enjoy the music. Um, and that's participatory. We're also trying, like the cinema, to Citizen Kino, we want to make Global East a radio kit an interactive radio program. So we have this chat room in the chaos pads, and we can share links as we're talking about a topic. We can then say, oh, hey, you, call us on this line, we'll you know, in real time. And, uh, and then potentially our, our tech has not Slovenia. been working so well as I am Miami in the from Switzerland. Need some, some, we are live some, broadcasting uh, collaborators. From but Michelin like in real time, you know, we could be doing things like oh, we're discussing this and somebody makes a comment Taiwan, and then you know instantly invite them in to speak OBS with us and on the stream. Um, uh, we use wire app for phone calls. If you're well. interested, write to us on the on so the chaos pad, and we can send you our on the art our wire information. The right role now. of not, artists not making that public. during the pandemic uh, 2020. I hope I haven't babbled Which on too that, much no, here. If there's the other questions, arts, and uh, artists working internationally, I, I did forget to say uh, the XL terrestrials are here to well. decolonize your they planet. They also have to okay, shift great. And, uh, that's why we came. That's why we came tonight. Decolonize and, uh, and then there was this other phrase I have just one last to end um, on this. The way you know, we are kind of living on uh, potentially we are turning well. our planet also the into a desertified experience uh, we have as desertification artists, kind of tells a story about And yet you how have like the richest people on the planet thinking like, oh we need to go terraform Mars. Yeah. Well what we're doing is we're we're terra deforming our own habitat, no. our home, in order to do that, to have all the tech mm -hmm. to go make this uh, extraordinary, uh, you know, un possibly oh, yeah, yeah. Kim Stanley Robinson says it's impossible yeah. for us to make it to Mars. Uh, uh, yeah. You can read his, he has very scientific details about why he, he says, yeah. people, this colonization of Mars is not happening in our lifetimes. And anyway, we don't want to colonize another planet. That's yeah. really stupid. We've colonized the Manthro Manthropocentric thing to yeah. think of doing. You know, we yeah. want to, uh, if, we, if we want to collaborate with organisms, other organisms or life, if, if it's out there. But hey, let's not go colonize another planet. So yeah. think about this. Stop Terra deforming yeah. our home. Yeah. You know, and we got to, we got to stop that. We, it's going to be up to us. Uh, Elon Musk isn't going to, He's not going to save anybody. He's not going to save uh, our uh, backyard. He's not going to save our kids. He's not yeah. saving me from my fucking landlord. Yeah. Uh, you know, so these motherfuckers. Uh, so on that note, I would ask also, because somebody is asking, yeah. what does solar punk mean to you? Ah, thank, thank you for asking that, because I didn't mention the solar punk. But I, I really, this resonated with me, the write-up for the, for, to the Chumbas. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Chumbas, who gave us the call. And we are here because solar punk is, you know, we extraterrestrials were very inspired by the punk scene and uh, the anarchist punk scenes and, and solar punk. What a great culture jam of this game, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, mm -hmm. which is, uh, what is, I don't know, it's, I haven't, I don't play these things, but it's kind of like a shoot 'em up, right? It's like, a, it's, it's got no intelligent, like terraforming, uh, messages there are things to actually create in real real space it's all it sucks you into the virtual it's like what's that what's that Spielberg movie real player one you know this is just advertising some kind of new product from these rich rich bastards who can produce this stuff it might be fun you know environments I, I was I love Blade Runner as a as, as a as a little XL terrestrial and uh, but 
there were many, many things that Ridley Scott wrote, got wrong with that movie. And uh, if you haven't read uh, Philip K. Dick's book, uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Um, it, it, Blade Runner Do Androids is a Dream of Electric Sheep. Yeah, that was the, the book that, that uh, then became known as, as Blade Runner. But it's a terrible adaptation. Uh, but uh, don't get me started on that topic. But what? Uh, back back to uh, solar, so, punk. solar punk. Or lunar punk, even. Yeah, and lunar punk. Both of these. We uh, in Harmon, you know, uh, as uh, yeah, yeah. We need both sides of those, like yin yang, probably, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we need uh, creative, collaborative energy, and we need also uh, uh, some cultures of resistance, mm -hmm. militant cultures of resistance, to stop the devastation that we are experiencing. The and the, the yeah the victimization and the, the the leaving people out in the the you know drowning in the Mediterranean this 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 can't go on so a punk attitude yes please uh, more of it and thank you so much for for, for having this so we can uh, we can we can speak some truth we can speak some extraterrestrial analysis and uh, sorry that I have to be um, in this. Um, uh, I didn't want to be uh, in this contagious idea of, of hey, we, we can be transparent in these dangerous moments. And I don't think we can necessarily. Uh, some things do, you know, we will have to, we'll have to show ourselves and uh, meet together in, in, in physical space for sure. Uh, don't hang out too long in the hamster cages. Uh, build is even with whatever, playing safe with the pandemic narrative. Yes. We need to try to organize face to face, being together, um, and um, really, really uh, great that we could actually come together and, and work on this. Lovely. And uh, I don't know. We we will um, we try to have a roundtable discussion tomorrow night on GRK, and maybe we will we will discuss a bit with you after the last session of today. What's coming up? Uh, so first, thank you so much. Uh, and that's the <laughs> well, you might have to speak a little louder. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. No, I'm just saying thank you so much to Dr. Frank, if I say very good, Pod Moses. Pod Moses. Or yeah. Podinsky. <laughs> or Podinsky, sometimes we come as Podinsky. Sometimes you come as Podinsky. Thank you so much for your very, very inspiring talks. Speaking some truth to power in this Corona times. Yeah. We are very welcome here for the Solar Punk Embassy or Anti Embassy. Um, yeah, we're very happy to have you, and thank you so much for coming and for everybody who was listening to you. Uh, Thanks. Uh, yeah, honored to be here. Thank you so much for setting up so quickly. Yeah. Great resource here. Yeah. There's also like other yeah. more projects here that are happening that are yeah. blowing my mind. There's community yeah. common yeah. stuff going on here that, that are good strategies. So. And coming up, we have, I think right now we have an hour break, and then afterwards we continue with an internationalist from the uh, internationalist community in Krojava. Uh, we have uh, an activist coming to us, talking to, to us about his experience in uh, the south of Kurdistan. Um, yeah, in the revolutionary times there. Looking and, forward to that. And then we have Radio Cosmica. So we'll have again uh, Melissa from the Cyber Girls uh, speaking to us about the DIY radio. Uh, and to end it, I will give a talk about what I call a pluriversal basic income. And that, that will be it for today. So hey. watch out for that. Yeah, I'm going to be around. I'm just looking around. Awesome. <laughs>